It is roughly 30 feet in length, uses your teeth and liver, and needs the help of trillions of bacteria in order to be successful. Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science and all about digestion. Your digestive system helps to keep you alive by breaking down food, absorbing nutrients, and eliminating waste. Digestion begins in the mouth. This involves both the mechanical digestion, the chewing of food, and chemical digestion. Teeth rip and chew food into smaller pieces, while saliva, which is secreted by three pairs of salivary glands, mixes with the food to aid in swallowing. Amylase in saliva starts to break down starches into simple sugars. The food moves to the back of the throat and to the pharynx, which is a space at the back of your throat that food and air pass through. From the pharynx, the food now moves down to the esophagus. Your esophagus is a muscular tube that connects the back of your throat, called the pharynx, to your stomach. It is roughly 8 inches long and 3 fourths of an inch wide. Your esophagus moves food from your throat to your stomach. When you swallow, two important things happen. First, the soft palate and uvula move backwards to help prevent food from going into the nasal cavity. Next, your larynx, also called your voice box, rises slightly. And here's a little bit what this looks like. This causes a flap of cartilage called the epiglottis to cover the opening of the trachea. This prevents the food from, as my mom used to say, going down the wrong tube. As the food you have chewed up, and this lump of chewed food is called a bolus, the muscles in your esophagus move in wave-like motions called peristaltic waves, which moves the food down the tube. This is why you can stand on your head and food will still go into your stomach. Your esophagus also has bands of muscles that open and shut to protect the esophagus from the strong stomach acid. This bottom band is called the gastroesophageal sphincter. Try saying that three times. When you swallow, small amounts of air also gets into your stomach along with the other stuff. Air is very light and rises to the top of your stomach. As pressure increases, some will be released and this is called a burp. The esophagus, the bolus now moves into the stomach. The stomach is a sac-like organ located under the rib cage and extends into the middle of your body. Your stomach is about 12 inches long and 6 inches wide and can hold about a quart of food or just shy of a liter. Your stomach has four main sections. The cardia, which is found near the esophagus. The fundus, which is a dome-shaped section at the top of the stomach the body, which is the largest section, and the pylorus, which is a funnel-shaped section and connects the stomach to the small intestines. The inside of your stomach contains thousands of folds called rugae. These folds increase the surface area of the stomach and help the stomach expand, kind of like the folds of this bellow allow it to open and shut. The stomach also has millions of pits called gastric pits. As food enters the stomach, these gastric pits spew hydrochloric acid, pepsin, which breaks down proteins, and mucus, which protects the stomach lining from the strong hydrochloric acid. If you have ever had heartburn, you've experienced how powerful the stomach acid is. Heartburn occurs when some of the stomach acid goes up into the esophagus. Your stomach is a muscular sac where mechanical and chemical digestion occurs. The hydrochloric acid and pepsin begin to break down the food into a liquidy paste called chyme. Depending on the amount of water you had to drink, the chyme may vary from pasty to liquidy. At the same time, your stomach has three layers of muscles that grind up the food. Think of mixing up cake batter. You have to stir up all the ingredients. The phyloric sphincter is a valve that regulates the amount of chyme that enters the small intestines. This helps keep everything moving smoothly. It takes food roughly two to four hours to pass through the stomach and into the small intestines where further digestion occurs. From the stomach, the chyme now moves into the small intestines. The small intestines are coiled inside your abdomen behind your belly button. They are your longest organ at 22 or 23 feet or roughly four times your height. It's the job of the small intestines to finish what your mouth and stomach started and that is to absorb nutrients from what you eat. They are called the small intestines because of their diameter compared to the large intestines. Among the twists and turns of the small intestines are small hair-like tubes called villi, 
and even smaller villi called microvilli. The villi help with absorption and greatly increases the surface area of the small intestines. The small intestines are divided into three sections, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And here's another view of the three parts of the small intestines. When the chyme from your stomach enters the small intestines, chemicals and mucus are released. The mucus helps counteract the acid of the stomach. Next, enzymes from the pancreas are released. Trypsins to help digest proteins, lipase to help digest fats, and amylase for carbohydrates. Also, bile, which is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder, is released to help with the breakdown of fat. The chyme is moved along the small intestines by muscle contractions called peristalsis. It takes this mixture three to five hours to pass through the small intestines. As the mixture moves along, pits within the small intestines secrete water and salts in order to aid digestion. From the small intestines, the now liquidy goo moves into the large intestines. Your large intestine is roughly 9 feet in length, but it gets its name because it has a larger diameter than the diameter of the small intestine. Your large intestine is also called the colon, and it's divided into several sections. The beginning section is called the cecum. Digested food from the small intestines travels to the cecum, which is a little like a pouch, and it receives this digested food from a section of the small intestine called the ileum. From the cecum, digested food travels upward into the ascending colon. It then travels to a horizontal section called the transverse colon, and then descends into the descending colon. Next, it travels into an S-shaped section called the sigmoid. Water and salt is absorbed in the large intestine, and also food is eventually converted into feces. The feces is stored in the sigmoid until it travels to the rectum and then exits the body. Your large intestines also contains trillions of bacteria which are part of your microbiome. These bacteria and your large intestine have a very important symbiotic relationship. The bacteria produce vitamin K, B vitamins, and are vital for the digestion and health of your large intestines. Vitamin K helps with your blood clots, builds your bones, and aids in keeping correct insulin levels. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.